46 controllers, 435 power supplies, 156, 728 pixels. Uh, I think I'm ready to go. Let's see. December 17th. Probably ought to get some sequencing done. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Can of Spader Christmas. In this episode, I want to talk about importing sequences into your display. So the, the backstory is that in, uh, when, in October, when I set things up, I really didn't have any sequences. All I had was a twinkle pattern um, on, on the display to kind of check the lights, but I really kind of wanted something to, uh, something that was sequenced, a song that I could play, or more than one. And, and, but I didn't really have time to do anything. So I went out to the three places that um, I knew about that, that did sequencing. So uh, Lilia is the first that I knew about and I will, I'll put um, links to all these places in the description, but Lilia does uh, sequencing. Uh, Ron out in California does sequencing uh, and um, Clyde does sequencing um, as PPD. So I looked at all three of those. I found a song that, um, I, that I liked. You know, I liked the music, I liked the sequence. So I purchased a sequence from PPD. And, um, and then I went to Ron's site and purchased a sequence from his site. And I went to Lilia and purchased a song from her site. Uh, now the latter two were Christmassy songs. So I had one from Pixel Pro Displays, I had one from Ex Extreme Sequences, and I had one from Lilia. And then I got a note back from Robert at PPD saying, you know, hey, you do a lot for the community, just let me know if there's any other sequences you want. So I got three more. Now, you might be saying, well, you know, I know how to use X Lights. I, and in fact, I know how to use X Lights and I can sequence my own songs. The problem is I'm not that good at it. And uh, plus it takes a little bit of time. Now I did sequence another song for Halloween uh, myself and you know, it's not near as good because I'm not spending the amount of time on the sequence as they do. So they can spend, you know, 80 hours, 100 hours doing one song where I might spend maybe two. So the quality of those sequences that you're purchasing are probably gonna be better than you can do in a couple of hours. Now, the cost of those sequences may be more than you want to deal with. Now, I, a couple of them have monthly uh, programs and I did not look into that at all, um, but, but that is an option for you. I think it makes it a little cheaper if you're, uh, you know, if, you're, if you're just getting sequences every month. And there is a free, uh, free, I think it's a Google Drive where there, you know, people have sequenced songs and their sequences are out there for you to download for free. Um, I will include a link to that if I can find it um, in, in the description of this video. Generally, all of this is done the same way though. And, and, but you do need to set your, your models up, your groups and things uh, kind of how they do their sequencing. So it does help, uh, like if you have four mini trees, well, you have a, a group called mini trees and all four of those mini trees are in there. So uh, it helps to sequence at the group level versus at the actual prop level. Now, if you only have like a, a string around your window and uh, a string around your door, you're probably not gonna have a whole lot of groups and stuff and, and this is probably also not gonna be for you because you can probably sequence those two things. But if you have a hundred props, you might wanna look into this if you haven't already. But the way you wanna do it, and, and Clyde actually has great videos on, on you know, kinda how you wanna organize your X lights, your models and your groups um, so that when you bring a sequence in, uh, you can map it to your display pretty easily, but I'm going to go through the process uh, and I will uh, I'll, I'll show you what I did to actually bring that 
into my display. It's it's really pretty easy. In fact, once you've done it once, you'll go, oh, this is this is really easy. But it takes, uh, you know, kind of grouping your props together in a way that uh, it makes it much easier to bring things in. And it's really just mapping what they did to what you have. And um, I'll go through that on the computer right now. Okay, no matter where you get a sequence from, they will likely have done some sort of group uh, sequencing. You know, I mean, I've got here all my props down here, but uh, most of the time I will spend just sequencing a group because it's just a lot easier. Now, if you only have one thing, you may not want to create a group for it, but if you plan, you know, you have one thing and you're going to plan on adding to it, uh, maybe go ahead and create a group that way it's just easier to re-render and and have it work on the new props that you've added into the groups uh, instead of having to you know copy stuff over copy the effects over and all that kind of stuff anyway and so a lot of the sequences that you'll get will have groups as uh, the the main part of the sequence now some of them they will um, say okay well we do groups for everything except for the mega tree or a matrix or something like that and different you know different vendors or just different people do things differently um, but it's a good idea to you know kind of organize things in groups so like I you know I've got the all house so my all house has got every single prop in it um, arches just the two arches um, candy canes uh, fences, so that's sometimes called a yard outline or a border, yard border, something like that. I got a couple of floodlights. Uh, the front quad is, is really the two windows and front door and the window above the door and then the, um, the wreath. Don't use that a whole lot, but uh, horizontal lines. Uh, oh, looks like I forgot one over the garage there. I need to add that. Icicles, uh, really don't have stuff, you know, icicles hung up, but I'm calling the wall washer an icicle just because uh, that seems to be something that's used quite a bit in the other, you know, people that do the sequencing. Uh, this is just kind of the left side. So mini trees, small mini trees, snowflakes, spheres, staffs. Uh, the stars on all the trees, so it's really kind of an all stars, and then we have star medium and star small. Uh, vertical lines and doors and windows. So what I did for this demo is I basically created a the demo folder, but it's, it's a fake show folder. So um, instead of having all of my sequences listed in here, this makes it a little easier to deal with. So uh, a couple of things that I add in addition to what the the standard stuff is is images so uh, any images that i use i will put in this images folder and that mainly the only thing i have in there is the background um, i have a music folder so i keep all my music in one folder uh, i think the rest of this is pretty much well imports um, so this will make it easier to deal with and i'll go through that in just a second um, so that's kind of how I organize my uh, show folder. Uh, if you you get a backup in here, if you have backups running and that kind of stuff, but that's kind of generally how I segregate things out. Um, so to import a sequence, I have this imports, <clears throat> and then I just put a folder for Home Alone because that's the one I'm going to do. Go to imports, go to Home Alone. Now this is the old version of the XLights file. Um, now I think they're XSD or something like that. So when I get ready to import something, the first thing I'm gonna do is just create an empty sequence with all my stuff. So I go over to sequencer, uh, I'll create a new one. I think it's a musical sequence so I can go pick my music. and 20 frames and done and so what that should do is bring all my stuff in here let me sort this uh -huh. okay and then so i have an empty sequence here it does have the music so i'm going to save that and i'll call it home alone and it's in the right place all right so if we look at 
what I've done here is I have the Home Alone, the new, this my Home Alone, and then the FSEQ. So now what I need to do is open up this, uh, this is Ron's file, so I need to open this up. So what I'm gonna do is go back to the controller section and change temporarily the directory to this imports. So we open that and things are gonna change. So yes, I wanna change, save that. And so now we should be in Ron's area. So let me open that sequence. Uh, Home Alone, Carol. This is the right one, right? Okay, imports. I don't want to do that. Home Alone. Home Alone Carol. And we open that sequence. So now it's going to ask me, well, oh, I can't find the media file. So we just go find the media file, and that is in my mapping demo music folder. Home Alone. Okay. And hit done. And you will typically see whatever the screen layout was that they were using. So I tend to have to put this somewhere. All right. Now then, uh, hit render and let it fully render. And then I save it back to where it was before. So I hit the save. And so now what we have is our XSQ uh, converted, because it converted the old file to the new file. And we now have this backup. We have color curves, which is empty. We got a couple of images, no palettes. The render cache and we have all these shaders and so what I typically do is I will copy images and shaders into my show directory so just grab all those copy and paste and then go into imports home alone images grab those two and I'll put those in my images directory. Okay. Now, what you wanna do is play this and kind of see what uh, props, you know, if you don't have all these kinds of props, then, then you're gonna to want to map things differently over to your display. So if you play that, and I don't know if you can hear the sound, but it's probably copyrighted, so I won't do that. But anyway, this is kind of what it looks like. So I have, uh, let's see here, we'll go to the layout. So I've got some candy canes, so I can map those. I've got some arches, I have some trees, some snowflakes. Uh, i got some, I have a wreath. I'm not sure which wreath that is. What is that? The mother of all wreaths. Okay, so I may map that to my wreath. Uh, for the wall washer, this is icicles, so I may map the icicles over uh, got a matrix. Okay, so now that I kind of have an idea of what this is supposed to look like, I'll go back and restore to permanent. So now we are back on my stuff. This is my layout. And I need to open up my file, my home alone, which is empty. It just has the audio. And then I will go up to the import effect, import and then import effects. And I can choose this XS cube. Now if you haven't saved it then it'll be the XML but you just hit open 
And then now we create this mapping. So these are all the groups and stuff that's available to map to my stuff. And you can also bring in timing tracks and all that kind of stuff. So uh, for all house, I'm gonna bring all pixels group. Uh, for the arches, I will bring in that, but he ha also has an arches right, so I will just set that to arch two. I think that's it. Now what you can do is you can just drag one thing over and then save the mapping. So hit save mapping and we'll call this home alone map and save that. And then you can bring it in and it'll add it to your sequence. Since I went ahead and added all this stuff, I'll just hit okay and it should import everything. And so as you can see in mine, well, that's all the timing. Um, Oh Lord. So anyway, here's all the effects. So what you want to do here is render all again, just make sure that everything renders. And save it. Actually, you don't have to save it right now. Uh, one thing I do want to try and look at is like these shaders. Um, because it may not be going to the right place. Yeah, so this is still pointing to the imports. So if I browse and, well, let me see what shader is using. Uh, wisps. So wisps needs to go to my wisp. Okay. And I probably need to. This is a wisp. What is this? That is a wisp. Ah, but see, it, did it pick it up? No, still demo. No? That's still the import. So let's go to the wisp. And so this is kind of a pain, but. I would suggest going through here because if you delete your import, then the shaders aren't going to work anymore. Well, that didn't pick it up. Demo shaders. Okay. Um, and so, for uh, I know he uses a lot of shaders, so probably go through and check this really close um, kind of open it up and see where all the shaders are uh, let's see meta blob stars and I won't make you sit through this anymore but uh, shaders is one thing that you want to remap. All right, so I've gone through this whole file and repointed all the shaders and all the images too. So the images uh, I put in my um, images folder. And so you don't have to do this because you do have all these files in your imports directory. And if you, you know, if you don't plan on using any of these shaders in any of your sequences, then you can just leave them in the imports folder and that'll be fine. You just hit, you know, render and everything is cool. So let's take a look and see what it looks like. I'm gonna go ahead and save this just for, just for fun. Let me re-render just to make sure that everything is picked up. But that's pretty much it. Um, you can create your FSEQ file and send that out to um, either your X schedule it's already in your X schedule if you've done that or uh, send it to your Falcon player and everything will work fine. 
Now I'm not sure what that AVI file is for. Maybe it's just the demo. Um, I can't look at it on my computer, so I don't know, but uh, let's take a look at this real quick. All right, I'm gonna send it out. First of all, that's my way to do it. Now you may have a different way. It's actually Clyde's way to do it, but I, that's my way. So if you have a different way to do it, that's fine. If it's easier, let me know. Now, the other thing is that you, you don't have to move the images or shaders or really anything else if you don't plan on using them in any other sequence later. So if you're just gonna use uh, that stuff for that sequence and you're not gonna delete the imports directory, um, then you can leave everything where it is because it'll still be there, it'll still be referenced there. And um, uh, so you don't have to go through all that other stuff that I did. If you would like to use those shaders in your own sequences or maybe some of the graphics in your own sequences, then put them in the standard area, remap everything. I know it's a pain, um, but then you have access to all that stuff and then you can delete the import directory if you want to do that too. Just save space. You know, it's cheap, but whatever. All right, as for the, the different styles, and so I chose three vendors because those are the three that I knew about. And so if you do sequences and I, I just haven't heard about you, apologize for that, but those are the three big ones that I know about. So uh, Lilia has been doing this the longest. Um, hers seem to be a little bit more nuanced. Uh, you know, you got things that kind of kind of come up and, and go out. Now that could have been song choice, uh, you, you know, that, that went with the song. She, she has a lot of layers. All of them have a lot of layers in their effects. So, so that's pretty much the same across all three of them. Ron at Extreme Sequences uh, is more uh, effects in your face. Just kidding. His are more uh, what I would call flashier. He's got a lot of stuff, very, very technically flashy stuff going on. Um, again, could have been song choice because um, that one was um, a dubstep song. Okay. And then uh, Pixel Pro Display, I would call them more whimsical again because of the song that I got from them. It was, um, uh, it was kind of a catchy song. Actually, that's the name of it. So it's a catchy song. They're all great. Um, they've all spent a ton of time on those sequences and I appreciate that they do that. You may be thinking, well, I can do that stuff. I don't mind spending 80, 100, 120 hours on a song to, to sell it. That's fine, you can do that. However, understand that you're using free software to do this. It's fine if you're doing it for your house. If you're doing it to sell, you may want to kick the developers a little, you know, give them a little kickback because they're writing this software. They're giving it, you know, making it available for free. You're turning around and commercializing it. You may want to work something out with them. I'm just saying you may want to do that. Now, I think uh, Pixel Pro Displays and Extreme Sequences has a monthly subscription kind of option. I did not check into those. I don't know anything about them, so go to their respective websites if that is something that you're interested in. Um, I don't think Lilia has anything, but if I'm wrong about that, please leave a comment below and, and I'll at least put something in the description saying, oh yes, and here's her subscription deal. Um, and if you, you know, if you have a, uh, sequencing business, I'd be happy to put it in the description as well. I just didn't know about it, but they gotta be good. I think that pretty much wraps it up for this one. Um, if you have any questions, leave them below and I will get to them. Uh, this will probably be the last kind of informational or teaching video that I do this year. Uh, I will post some music videos coming up. I have to edit them. I did do some filming and uh, kind of got to see what they look like and if I need to do any more filming. Um, so those will be coming out later on. 
Um, if you have any vendor specific questions, please contact the vendors. And um, again, I will list those in the description. Other than that, have a Merry Christmas, uh, Happy New Year, and uh, I hope your display is uh, set up and going well. And if not, uh, I hope you get it there before Christmas. And uh, that's about it. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you again soon. Now I shot an email. Uh, so I got six of these. And so they, I got five of these. I am your father.